Come celebrate Sunnyside Ford's 80th anniversary at our newly remodeled and expanded sorry, at our newly remodeled and expanded dealership in Holden. With deals on the powerful F-150, 80th anniversary priced. The fun to drive Focus, 80th anniversary priced. Taurus and Windstars, 80th anniversary priced. Plus Explorers, Expeditions, and Excursions, it's our 80th anniversary celebration. Take a ride to the all-new Sunnyside Ford, 944 Main Street in Holden now for the best prices and selection. It's our 80th anniversary celebration. Here are Ari Confessor's numbers through the last four games. 33 receptions for 459 yards and six touchdowns. And he came up with a big grab just at the end of the first quarter, and that brings up second and one from the seven-yard line. Thought they'd play a little Casey in the Sunshine Band there at the end of the first quarter. You know, that's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> I like it. Here it is, second and one. O'Neal to throw, going to the end zone for Confessor, incomplete. Incomplete. And you hear the lobbying going on between the wide receiver and the defensive back lobbying the official. I'll tell you, you're going to watch this play closely. I thought that was contact right there. The arm comes down quick, and it hits Confessor's right arm. That's Ainsworth Minot, number 38. And you know, if his hand hits Confessor's hand before the ball gets there, that's interference. Third and one, 14th play of this drive. Steve Silva is down at the one yard line. It'll be first and goal, Holy Cross. And again, Jim, it is power football Steve saying Silva nothing over, fancy. Baby. We're going to line up helmet on helmet. And who's going to win the battle up front? Well, I tell you, up the middle, they have just dominated. The offensive line, great job of blocking. David Cannon just throwing his nose tackle out of the play. And you see the offensive line, Andrew Schofer, number 71. They are hungry looking for blockers. And they've done a great job up the middle. And Holy Cross looking at a first and goal here to go ahead. But there is an injured Raider down on the field. They're looking at his left leg. I can't get the number. I think it's Will Arnold, number 36. Yeah, it appears that's exactly who it is. You know, they picked on him a little bit in the first quarter. Or it could be, yeah, it's got to be Will Arnold. You look at some of the numbers from the first quarter. Holy Cross led in time of possession, 9 minutes and 23 seconds to 5 minutes and 37 seconds. You see Arnold being intended to. They had more first downs than the Raiders, 9 to 5. And Holy Cross with 159 total yards to 106. For Colgate. Again, we see the look here. Silver hitting the hole. See both arms on the football. And bang, right there you see Arnold come in and just lower his shoulder. They were looking at his left leg. And that's where they're going to carry off. Couldn't tell if he rolled on his ankle or not, but Will Arnold really making a touchdown saving tackle is going to be taken out of the game. And I tell you, it doesn't look like he'll be back today. That last run by Steve Silva was the 10th first down of the game for Holy Cross. Silva, former Rhode Island Gatorade and USA Today Player of the Year for that state. You see some of the Colgate fans across the way, and this is the only trip that Colgate makes into New England. It's a big one for the Raiders, and you can see their fans out in force today on a glorious day, late fall day here in late November. And it feels more like early September. First and goal from the one. Silva gets the call. He is into the end zone standing. And the Holy Cross offense is making a statement right now. Oh, they are. And they are controlling the line of scrimmage up front. They are just pounding, pounding Colgate's front four. I'll tell you what, this is impressive. And this crowd, and this is a good crowd on hand, has had a lot to cheer about here in the early going. I was talking to Coach Dembowski before the game. I'll get into it after the kick on, on how they were preparing these players for today's game. Michael DeSantis's point after is up and good, and Holy Cross has their first lead of the ball game. Just big men on big men. Watch them snap the ball, come right into your living room. You see a little shuffle step by Hoover, but look at the Hogs up front just turning bodies. 
Nice job, Steve Fox, turning his guy outside. They create a seam, and that's all Silva needed to get in the end zone. We're going to take a timeout on the field with 14-39 remaining here in the first half. Holy Cross with their first lead of the game. They're up 14-10. I watch Worcester News tonight on WCTR TV3. I watch Worcester News tonight. I watch local sports on WCTR TV3. I love all sports. Nobody covers local sports like oh, Channel 2. Tyler oh. I love the parades. I watch them every year. I like to watch all the local programming. Central Massachusetts is watching WCTR TV Channel 3. Quality local programming for more than 15 years. Channel 3 is a service of charter communications and is not available on the dish. Rivalry. Now, the condition or fact of competing with somebody or something. How's this definition of a rivalry? Thanksgiving Day football game played in any weather, under any circumstances, and anywhere. And Central Mass is full of them. Thanksgiving Day. The best football rivalries, old and new, can be seen on Thanksgiving Day football frenzy on Channel 3 in Charter Communications. And by the way, this is one Thanksgiving Day treat you can't find on a dish. All right, welcome back, everyone. Let's take another look at that Steve Silva touchdown run and the work of the offensive line and the fullback, Tom Hoover. Kent, JT Neitzel on a trap block does a great job. The David Cannon, Steve Fox just seal off the inside, and Silva just hits the hole in it. They've had success with that trap play, but you know you got to give success to is the, is the pulling guard or the pulling tackle. He's got to make the decision either to have a kickout block or come up the hole and take on a linebacker. And that time, JT Neitzel did a great job on a kickout block, took out the defensive tackle, and Silva's able to hit the hole. Just a long, time-consuming drive by Holton Cross and their offense, giving the defense a rest, and that's something they've been looking for all season long. And the Raiders almost breaking a big one on the return. And Craig Iverson making the stop for, Cole, for Holy Cross at the 31-yard line. Well, you know, you talk about the offense and the defense of Holy Cross. The offense has been able to put points on the board. It's a defense that's been a little suspect, not being able to hold their opponents when they've had to. So, you know, you talk about big drives and, you know, big times to be on a football field, but this is a pretty big one for the defense. they got to set the tone. And Holy Cross has the lead. It's the first time they've led in a game since the first quarter of the Bucknell game. When they led that game, 14-8. to eight. And Graham pulls it in. He went up with Tyler Nugent, and Graham just hauled it in. And that's a mismatch size-wise with the six-foot-three Graham going up against Tyler Nugent. Again, it was another pass I thought could have been picked off. It was like a rainbow. And I tell you what, Luke Graham at 6'3", 195, he went up about 35 inches to get that ball because his hands were way extended. And nice Nugent catch. goes 5-8. Brown rolling out. And a misdirection play to Branch. Branch slips one tackle, slips another, and Branch is knocked out of bounds in at the 19-yard line, the linesman says. Wow. 23-yard run from Jamal Branch the junior from Falmouth High School. Well, it's over pursuit by the Holy Cross defense. You see they, a deep draw by Colgate. We saw it last week, and Holy Cross's defense just gets into pass coverage way too quickly. They hand the ball off to Jamal Branch, and there's nobody backside to pick him up, and it's a pretty easy gainer, a big gainer. 23 yards for Branch. Branch gets the call again, cuts it upfield, and is dropped at the 15, make it the 14 by Tim O'Hara. That time, Branch running behind Mike Musson, Mark Scalafoni on a counter play. See how Jamal Branch is getting up there with some guys that have made some noise at Colgate. Kenny Gamble, who, who we played against here at Fitton Field, 1986, he was a phenomenal running back. I remember Jerry McCabe actually knocked out Kenny Gamble out cold in a game 1986 when Holy Cross played him. Here is Branch inside the 10 and knocked out of bounds at the seven yard line. 
Jamal Branch squares his shoulders very quickly, Jim, and he's like a dump First truck going downhill. First and goal. T tell you what, he is like a dump truck going downhill. And, you know, you got to get a hit on this guy at the line of scrimmage. You can't arm tackle him. And you see right here how big he is. Now, how would you like to hit this? Ooh, I mean. Johnny Swear, our cameraman, showing the quick feet down there. Branch coming right at you. Googly Amati is the fullback. Branch at tail. Pitch out to Branch. Turns the corner. Branch. Did he get in? Yes, he did. He was met right at the cone, but he got the ball across the plane. Well, John Carr made a real valiant effort to come up and take him on and try to knock him out of bounds. But you're not going to take Jamal Branch down very easily with a head of steam. And Colgate does a fine job of pulling the backside guard and tackle and sealing off the corner just that whole, as Holy Cross did on about the same yard line on their first drive. And Jamal Branch has just tied the Patriot League record for touchdowns in a season with 23. He broke the Colgate record last week. Kenny Gamble had 21. That was the Colgate record. The point after is up and good. Well, you're going to see a lot of offensive linemen going left, all five of them. Student body left. Nobody on the corner, but a nice try there by John Carr. But Jamal Branch wins that battle. So our seesaw battle continues. Colgate has wrestled the lead back once again. It's 17-14 Raiders. from the fall high school sports season only on Central Mass Champions premiering December 9th at 7 on Channel 3 and Charter Communications your home for Central Mass high school sports the Ice Cats led by Jerry Yabolinski Yablowski wrong uh, Brent uh, Scheistelmeyer. Do it again. Yabel, Yabelowski, Scheffelmaster. Get it right this time, remember, we're gonna go. Get the latest news on Yablonski, Scheffelmeyer, and the rest of the Ice Cats right here on Channel 3. And on November 30th, bring a new teddy bear and toss it on the ice when the Cats score. All bears will be donated to local children's charities for the holidays. Here's the second look at that touchdown run. Again, they call it student body left. See, every offensive lineman is a lead blocker on this play. Nice block up front by number 42. He bulldogged him to the ground. Eric Gugliamati, he just he just steamrolled. Kind of tackled him. I mean, that's a lot of... Kind of just got the arms wrapped around him. I'm not the best adder in the world, but I tell you what, you take 277, 303, 270, 305, 263. I mean, that's got to be about... My word, that's got to be about 1,500 pounds coming at you. Yeah, it is, it is a lot. See if fast so, finger Phil Robo can get those numbers added up. Colgate going 69 yards on that drive to take the lead back. Now they kick it off to the closed end zone. Confessor at his own goal line. Straight up the middle. Adi Confessor is out over the 20 to the 24 yard line. Flag flies late. Well, this could be an interesting call. He said it came in late. I couldn't see a penalty, but you wonder if it's going to be a late hit. A hold. Ah. Normally that's going to be thrown a little earlier. Yeah. And that's a killer. Official will give us the call. Back. During the run back, holding by the return team. Ten yard penalty, first down. How about the short sleeves? The officials in short sleeves, the players in short sleeves. This is just an absolute perfect day for football. See the sun out. I mean, you, when you look at the schedule, you always know when you play Colgate, it's going to be absolutely frigid in a frozen tundra. 
You wake up today, and sun's out. You go out in your shorts, get the paper. It's a beautiful day here in central Massachusetts. O'Neal to throw, pumps, going deep. And Larson has it. Did he come down with it? Okay, it was jarred loose while he was in the air. Minot hit him. Larson went high for the football in between two defenders, had it, and Minot jarred it free. And he did have it. Number 30, Andre Bogle, has come in to replace Will Arnold, number 36. He's on the coverage, but that's what your strong safety, free safety does. He comes over to the football, and he just knocks it out of your hand when you make a catch. Does his foot come down? That's the question on that play. Did his foot come down where he had possession, it would be considered a fumble. It was close. Here's the Condi, straight up the middle. Gideon Akandi. And gets up to the 14-yard line, a pickup of four on the play. I'll tell you, though, I like the last call, going deep with Larson. You know, Will Arnold gets hurt. They bring in Andre Bogle. Andre Bogle actually is 5'9", 171 pounds. So when Coach Allen gets him on Nick Larson, he's going to want to throw the ball to that side of the football field. Holy Cross facing third and six. They are three of four on third downs thus far in the ballgame. O'Neal's going to go from the shotgun. Two wide receivers to the near side and two to the far. Looks right. Fires right, and it is caught. Where is the forward progress? Say This is going to be awfully close depending on what spot, but I think he's about, about seven or eight inches short. Again, Akande's got to know where that first down marker is if he's going to be a primary receiver. He needed to go about another yard or two. See, he makes a phenomenal catch laying out his body. But I think he comes up just about a yard short. I don't think there's any doubt that Holy Cross needs to punt this football here. Yeah, you got to play the field position game now. So yeah. Ryan McManaway will come on to punt. J.B. Gerald back deep to receive for Colgate. He averages six yards a punt return. McManaway hammers one deep. Gerald back to his own 40. Straight up field. Gerald into midfield, across midfield, into Holy Cross territory. Gets down to the 40. And he is ridden down uh, there. And a flag flies late. And they always catch the guy who retaliates. I, I saw exactly who it was. Bradley Capone, number 66 at Holy Cross. He's going to get flagged with a late hit personal foul, 15 yards. And I tell you what, you just cannot do that in this football game. I mean, this is the biggest game or your season. You know, you can put all the other losses behind you if you can beat Colgate today on fit and field. And mistakes like that will kill you. Certainly will. The one thing you do that I would say about that, though, is you do like to see the fight. You like to see that fire. I mean, you certainly don't want to see it. Dead ball, personal foul by Holy Cross. 15-yard penalty from the dead ball spot. You don't want to see it result, obviously, in a 15-yard penalty. It's going to give a team great field position. But you, know, you talk about a team not quitting, and you talk about a team fighting right through their final game. And, and that's what it is. You know, there's a lot of pride out there. But it's always the guy that retaliates, too. You've got to hit first. You don't hit back. You've got to say, you know what, I'll get you on the next punt. You're absolutely right. You get his number and get him on the next punt. Jamal Branch gets the corner. And Jamal Branch steps out of bounds. Inside the 20, down to the 19. You know, and I think here, when Jamal Branch gets in the red zone, his eyes get like saucers. You know, he can smell the goal line, a toss sweep. He's got some lead blockers. But he does a lot on his own. He'll take an initial hit, and he'll just throw it aside, and then he'll pick up yards. He's got nine rushes so far for 75 yards. He has rushed for over 100 yards in 10 straight games. The only game he did not do it was the first game of the season against Georgetown in a game that he was banged up, had a shoulder injury, and only carried the ball six times. Branch picks up the first down. And there is Ben Kohler, and you talk about a guy who on Sunday is going to find it tough to get out of bed. I mean, his, his knee is shot, and he just keeps throwing his body into Jamal Branch, who goes 225 pounds, and that's... Uh, that's certainly a recipe for a few Advils. Plus, he's got a torn MCL, which, you know, you're not able to unload a lot because you use your legs when you hit and spring into people. And, you know, with a bad bum knee, you've got to use more of your, sacrifice more of your body. And here is Branch again, this time 
well defended by Holy Cross. They strung him out and then they dropped him. David Fitzpatrick spearheading the defensive effort. It's an eye formation, just a power here. You see a pretty good job at the line of scrimmage by, by Holy Cross's defense. You got 59. Adam Luker's coming up filling holes, and it really causes Jamal Branch to take away his primary running lane and bounce it outside. Kohler's able to come up from his defensive back position and make another hit on him. These two are going to know each other pretty well by the end of the game, I think. Brown tosses it out to Branch. Branch follows his blockers, gets the outside, and is brought down by Fitzpatrick. And Ann Query's down there with the parabolic mic. You can hear the smacking going on. Again, it's that old student body left. They take every offensive lineman after the snap and they pull him. Watch this, one down block by the tight end, four guys ahead. But you see the purple shirts doing a pretty good job of holding their own on the line of scrimmage and pursuing to the football. Yeah, there are a lot of hats around that yeah. football and that's what you've got to do with Branch. You've got to gang tackle them. So it brings, down a big th brings up a big third down for Colgate. They stand at the Holy Cross six, facing third and four. Play action, Brown rolls, fires, touchdown. Kugli Amati, the fullback with his first touchdown reception of the season. Well, that's a pretty good call down there because you got to think when they're in a tight formation, with the offensive line in an eye formation with the backs that they're gonna pound it with Jamal Branch. And Eric Guglielmati just slips out on a fullback slip off a bootleg, goes to the corner of the end zone, and Chris Brown throws a perfect strike in there. Schwarzberg is on for the point after. He is two for two so far. And the point after is up and it is good. It is good, so the Raiders taking a 24-14 lead. As a linebacker, Jim, you see Guglielmati coming out at you 10 plays in a row, and he's there to block you, and you think on the 11th he's going to do the same thing, and that's what you said. It's a great play call. Absolutely, and you see Kyle Trott just fire into the gap to try to block him, and he just fakes the block and slips out into the flat. And Holy Cross defense just a step too slow to get out there, and Brown throws a perfect strike for a Colgate score. Raiders up by 10. We're back with more right after this. I'm Ronnie Deutsch. I have settled IRS tax bills for only $20. $20! Ronnie was able to help us settle this debt for only $20. Saved me $34,000. Saved me $10,000. When she says that she can settle this for pennies on the dollar, she absolutely means it. If you wait, you can lose your chance to settle for $20. Call the law offices of Ronnie Deutsch at 1-800-524-8855 for a free and confidential tax analysis. Call 1-800-524-8855. I am America's truck driver. I am America's truck driver. I deliver America's food. America's fuel. America's furniture. If you got it, I brought it. I drive over 400 billion miles a year. 400 billion miles a year. It's a great job. I am the safest driver on the road. I keep America moving. I'm proud. I'm proud. I'm proud. I'm proud to be America's truck driver. Gugliamati with just two catches coming into today's game. Picks up his third of the season. It's good for six. Well, it was a good call down here because you're thinking Jamal Branch all the way pounding the end zone. Your linebackers are thinking run. Everyone's thinking run. They come out with a run look. They slip the fullback out and he's wide open. You see the scoring drive, five plays, drive, 40 yards, two plays, minutes, four seconds. Yards, two really a no-nonsense type of drive. They got excellent field position off the punt by Holy Cross and he basically just marched down the field and stuck it in the end zone. So, see a lot of Jamal Branch on that drive. A lot of wide runs, but they finish it off with a little slip pass to their fullback. And now Colgate will kick it away again. Confessor and Akandi are back deep for Holy Cross. They both stand at their goal line. Colgate has done a very good job on the kickoff coverage today in bottling up Confessor. And they do it one more time as they drop Confessor at the 12-yard line. The special teams of Colgate, exceptional. Nate Thomas comes up with the play. 
Nate Thomas is a former all-league running back. I tell you what, it was a heck of a coverage because Confessor really never had a shot here. You know, he never gets a seam to hit, but he's waiting for the play to develop. And what happens, you get a guy coming flying down on special teams with reckless abandon, and he makes contact with him before he can even get going. Colgate defense shifting before the snap. O'Neal from the shotgun. Five wide receivers set. Looks to his right, has time, fires out to the right, it is caught at about the 20 yard line. Sean Gruber with the grab. And he is out to the 20 yard line and that'll bring up second and two. Not a bad job of picking up eight yards. I mean, you know, first, first down, ball's inside your 15 yard line. If your receiver can get eight yards running a quick pattern, hey, take it. And that's exactly what they did. O'Neill will go from under center. Eight minutes and 20 seconds remaining here in the first half. Hand off to Silva straight up the middle. Silva bangs over the 20, maybe got one. Tell you what, that time the inside trap play did not work. I want to try to get the number who came up. I heard who it was, but I didn't see who it was. This was a heck of a hit on Silva. Again, you see the backside guard pulling, but a nice job of coming up and just sticking your head in there. Might have been Tem Lukabu. See the Colgate rushing defense, only 85.4 yards per game. That is phenomenal. Here is Silva again on third and short, and I think Colgate closed the door on that one. So it'll bring up third down and fourth, rather, fourth and one. And it appears Holy Cross is going to go for it. You know, this is what you said, Jim. Let it go. Hey, you know, you, you're, you're slated to lose the football game. Everybody thinks Colgate's going to come here and tick, kick your tail all over the place. You know, is it a bad decision at this juncture? I mean, why not go for it? I mean, you know, Colgate's going to score 50 points, and so let him score 50 points, but at least try to get a first down. It's a toss sweep. Hoover's leading the way, and Silva is going to be close. This wow. is going to be very close. You got to go slip a $10 bill in that rest pocket and tell him to take a <laughs> step to his left. Oh, man, is this going to be close. Steve Silva on the toss, toss sweep. sweep. It was a pretty good call. He had a good lead block out in front. Right there, I wish Hoover would have stopped and looked back inside. I think he, not, rather than not go downfield, they only need a yard. He's got to help out Confessor. That's a big job putting Confessor on a linebacker. On a linebacker. He did, and Confessor did a great job, too, of, of working did. on Antrell Tyson. He got it. They got it. Gutsy call. They got the first, and the drive continues. Just had to go give Phil Robo a little grief because he didn't believe in the call, and I figured, hey, why not? Yep. Let it go. Let it ride, and that's exactly what Holy Cross is going to do here today. If you're going to upset a team that right now is ranked number one in the Lambert poll and is ranked as high as number two in the nation, you've got to take some chances. Yeah, I, I think it's a good call. I mean, why not go for it? Now your offense has new blood. Get a little momentum back, and let's see if they can air it out and move the ball down the football field. Trips to the far side. O'Neal looks that way. Fires over the middle. Caught by Confessor. Slips a tackle. Slips another tackle. Adi Confessor is off to the races and gets inside the 35 to the 34-yard line. What a play by Confessor, who somehow came out of a pack of two or three defenders still on his feet. Well, I tell you, you know, that play started by the offensive line picking up the twist stunt. A quick in route by Confessor and a rocket by O'Neal. Confessor makes a, a circus catch to be able to come down with that football. And now it's just a foot race and he does what he does best and just picks up yards after the catch. But what a fine throw and a fine catch. Wow, 43 yards on the play. Silva goes in motion. 
Stays in to help the block. Confessor, old Larson rather, and the flag flies this time. It was you know, Nick Larson working on Bogle. One of the things I think they'll call Bogle on is he never looked back for the football. You know, you can have great coverage on a guy, and you can defend a pass, you know, very, very well. But if you don't turn and look for the football, pass interference. You make contact by the defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Now we'll see here on the replay. It's a, it's a mismatch that they want to exploit. It's a pretty good throw, but you see how he gets his hand out. He never turns for the football until the very end. Result of the, belt, the, the referee had already thrown the flag because he got his hand on him without looking back. So it's a pretty good call. So Holy Cross is in the red zone now, down to the Colgate 19. It is Silva right up the middle, and Ryan Miller is there to meet him. Miller was waiting right at the doorstep. That's one of those plays you look at, you had everybody block except one guy, and Ryan Miller, and he didn't bite inside at all. He basically stayed home, and he took away that cutback. We saw him do it on the previous drive, and that's just good fundamental football Steve when you're Silva a player, you stay home, the play. and you Miller take that cutback stuck. away from a running back. Colgate player is down on the ground. You see, we had a shot before of Ryan Miller. Ryan Miller is actually in for Ryan Dish, who is the leading tackler on this Colgate team before he tore his ACL and MCL in the Yale game and went out for the season. This is Tem Lukabu, who was the co-defensive player of the year a year ago in the Patriot League, preseason defensive player of the year, the unquestioned leader of that defense for Colgate. Leads him in tackles, just a disruptive force. And he is down right now. He has 10 tackles for a loss, five sacks, has recovered three fumbles, broken up eight passes, and has 89 tackles. Lukabu does it all for Colgate, and this would be a big loss for the Raiders. It doesn't look like it's serious. Lukabu actually able to bend the leg, but let's see if we can find him. You see, it looks like he just gets rolled on right there. You yep. see... You know, Edward Lobb kind of went in and threw him over a pile, and he just got his leg a little twisted and contorted. But, you know, I think Coach Biddle just breathed a huge sigh of relief that he got up and walked off the field. I think that entire Colgate sideline oh. did. Because that guy, you know, he's the catalyst of making huge plays. He may not be the actual person, but he flies around and he picks off blocks and he allows other players to make big plays. So that would have been a shocking loss for them. So Crusaders facing a second and 10 from the 19. O'Neal fires over the middle, caught by Larson. And Nick Larson looks like he'll be just about a half a yard short of another Holy Cross first down. You know, I, I think O'Neal is, is playing a great football game today. His patience and his where he's placing the football couldn't be better. Three-step drop, turns his hips. And he fired, look where he throws this. I mean, it's perfectly in stride for Nick Larson to catch. Nick Larson has four catches for 40 yards here in the final game of his career for Holy Cross. John O'Neill has shown tremendous poise too as he has several times gone back and waited for a wide receiver to clear. Now he goes to the end zone for Confessor. Off his fingertips, incomplete. McCune was in coverage. Well, that's a tough call when you run a corner pattern into double coverage and you try to throw the ball up and over the head of the receiver and let him stretch out for it. I would have liked to have seen Holy Cross just run a little toss sweep and pick up a first down, but, you know, again, Confessor just off the end of the fingertips. We've seen this a couple times today. And O'Neal had Minot right in his grill. Ainsworth Minot really... Laid the hammer down on O'Neal as he threw the ball. Here is DeSantis, six of nine on field goal attempts thus point, thus far in the season, and make it seven for ten. So Holy Cross drives it down the field. They get the field goal, and now it is a 24-17 game. You are watching exclusive coverage of Crusader football on WCTR TV3.
as a badge of honor. Give blood to the American Red Cross and learn about the Save a Life Tour at givelife.org. A paradise like this isn't easy to come by, but it does still exist. Because the Nature Conservancy works locally with people like you to save precious places around the world forever. I'm Paul Newman. Help the Nature Conservancy save the last great places. Here's a second look at that kick. Michael DeSantis from 27 yards out. Yeah, it was, a, it was yep. a great kick, and we talked at the break. What a fine job of Holy Cross to get three points out of this drive. You know, people say, geez, you wish you got in the end zone, but, you know, they, they take the kick and they're pinned back in lousy field position, and you see it's just a, a good day for a family to come out and watch a football game today. It really is. Nine plays on that drive, 78 yards, took four minutes and 44 seconds off the clock. And Holy Cross has made this a one-touchdown game once again. You talk about the families coming out, Jim, and you look at the, the baseball field right now is littered with kids playing pickup football games. You know, that's the way it should be up here at Fit and Field. You should have kids playing football. You should have grills going. You should have a big crowd. Here's oh. Christy on the return. Christy is dropped at the 19-yard line. Great coverage by Kevin Dunn and the Holy Cross Crusaders, and that's a case of staying in your lane, and that's what Kevin Kevin Dunn did right there. It is, because for a guy that's the wide guy, it's very easy to, to come back to the middle of the field. But Dunn stays right in his lane, and he just shuffles down the line of scrimmage, gets by his blocker, and he comes up with a big special teams play to pin Colgate inside their 20. Mike Christie, the man he tackled, is believed to be the only player in New York history to rush for over 3,000 yards in high school and throw for over 3,000 yards. He's a heck of an athlete. Here is Brown, rolling, under pressure from Trodden. Trodden trying to trip him up. He got through Trodden, but he couldn't get by Johnny Carr. Well, I'll tell you, Trodden got a hand on him, and he caused him to stumble. I think if, if Brown's not able, or, or if he's not forced to stumble here, Watch the little arm swing here. Boom, he just gets a hand on his leg and up, up, yep. up. And that makes John Carr able to come up and lunge at him and hold him to only about a four yard gain. So it's second and six with three minutes and 37 seconds left in the first half. Play action again. Brown fires to the sideline, incomplete. It was intended for Graham and Gary Bordelon on the coverage and Bordelon went high that time for it and just knock the arms of Graham, and that's the thing to do. You, you may not be able to get as high as Graham does, but if you can knock him at the elbow or the side of the arm. Well, I was just thinking, boy, that guy can get up. I mean, Luke Graham can go up for the football. And, you know, you wonder if Chris Brown, you see some of the balls that come out of his hand, they look like they're overthrown. You wonder if he doesn't do that on purpose, throws the ball a little bit high. You know, not that you'd want to, but, you know, Luke Graham can sky. I mean, that kid can jump out of his shoes. Yeah, and he knows if he puts it up there, the only guy who has a shot at it is Graham. Here comes Holy Cross on the blitz. Colgate picks it up, dumps it out to the side, incomplete. It was intended for Branch, and again, credit the defensive schemes and the play calling on defense, Jim, because Holy Cross is letting it all hang out on both sides of the ball, and that means bringing safeties and bringing linebackers and kind of creating havoc and disrupting the play call for Colgate. Yeah, and you know, for the defense, that was a big series. That was the first three and out that they've had all day. First time they've stopped Colgate and not allowed them to score. So Jason Sutton, the freshman, on to punt for Colgate. 31-yard average a week ago. Confessor standing back at his 35. The kick is away, and Confessor calls for the fair catch at the 47-yard line. So the offense will have great field position and three minutes and 20 seconds to work with. Trailing by a touchdown. Only a 30-yard kick that time. And there is Dick Biddle. The rumors swirling about Biddle possibly going to Duke at the end of this year. He is an alum of the school. He played football there. 
And he has certainly been very successful at Colgate with seven straight seasons of seven wins or more. He denies the rumors, but they are certainly swirling out there. Little swing pass to Silva, makes the first man miss and gets out over midfield and in to Colgate territory. It was Boogle who was the first guy, and Silva just gave him a little shake. I tell you, sometimes the hardest pass for a quarterback to make is when a guy is wide open. You know, sometimes you yeah, throw it a little outside. Look at this. I mean, that is like, that's like playing catch in your backyard. O'Neal has just got, he's got control of his game today. He really does. And he's thrown the ball very, very well, and he's seeing his receivers. And Steve Silva is a guy who's going to fight tooth and nail for every extra yard he can get. He is a tough guy to bring down. His brother plays at Boston College, his younger brother. Gideon Akandi up the middle. He is met by Miller. And Colgate saying he fumbled, and they have it. Well, you know, I'm surprised the whistle didn't blow. I mean, his momentum had been stopped, and the pile was really going nowhere. And the referees, they, they kind of just stood around and never blew the whistle. Colgate says they have it. And they do, say the officials. First turnover of the ball game. And that's a killer. Hannah got it. You know, we're going to see a Conde here just run up in the middle line again. They're just a little trap play, bang. You know, right there, it looks like, you know, everything's, you know, it's questionable. You can never call, tell a referee to blow his whistle, but I thought for sure, and I think a Conde thought the play had play was over, it wasn't going anywhere, and he just got stripped of the ball. So the Colgate offense now has good field position, starting from their own 45. Looked like we had a false start. Yeah, we do. The fullback, Kugli Amati, jumped early, and now we got a little bit of a push and shove battle going on. And this one has escalated. And this is this is what football is, you know. You get a couple hits right as the whistle blows or right after, and then you say, you know what, we're in a street fight. Let's go. Yeah, Todd Mulligan, <laughs> number 70. I tell you, he was just getting in it. It looked like uh, Roy Jones Jr. out there for about three seconds. <laughs> Well, this, you know, I think, Jim, you can talk to this, but I, it seems to me I that there is. False start by the offense. Five-yard penalty. It remains first down. Seems Please to reset be the clock a pretty two, good dislike two, seven. for Colgate on the Holy Cross side that goes back a few years. Well, it goes back a lot of years. I mean, it, it was always a game, although it was never the biggest rivalry. There were a couple teams on your schedule that you really, really knew were going to be physical and you disliked the team in Colgate probably led the league. I mean, it, no doubt. Brown going deep for Graham, and he's got it. Graham just adjusted to the football. Darren Davis was in coverage. Luke Graham was looking back, and he adjusted to the football in the air. Uh, well, we've seen Darren Davis do this a couple times throughout the year where he doesn't look back for the football. You know, it was a very bad throw by Chris Brown. He way underthrew it, but Luke Graham has the presence of mind to turn back for the football, and Davis just lets him, basically just runs right by him. And one of the things defensively when you're going to start blitzing people and you're going to put, you know, eight or nine guys in the box is those cornerbacks are going to be in man coverage. And they've got to, in order for the defense to work, you cornerbacks really have to play well because they're going to be out there on an island. You're absolutely right, Kevin. And when the quarterback makes a bad throw like that, I mean, we've seen a couple times today Colgate's first touchdown, where if the defensive backs came up with a big play, yeah, it'd be a different ball game. But that, you know, that was just, was just not a good play, not looking back for the football. So the Raiders come up second down and six with a minute and 34 seconds left here in the first half. Branch gets the carry, gets outside. Branch gets inside the 20 and is brought down at the 17 yard line. That should be. A Colgate first down. It's going to be awfully close. It looks like he has it. You talk about running backs and keeping their shoulders square. Watch his numbers as he's going to come through this hole. Just turns him straight upfield, and he keeps him straight until he gets hit. You know, that's something you can't teach. He's now gone over 100 yards on 14 carries, and it was a great first half. That's 11 straight games now 
that Branch has eclipsed the century mark in rushing. During this first half, he actually became the all-time leading rusher for a single season in Patriot League history. Breaking Kenny Gamble's record, and this time the Holy Cross defense is right there. Garrett Hunt, Matt Lemire. The Holy Cross defense really played that one well. The defense did. Garrett Hunt, 75, but a nice job of getting penetration. See how they pick off the blockers. A lot of times, if you can get penetration over the line of scrimmage, you'll pick off a lot of those, those pulling guards and tackles. The guy that's not going to get any credit on that play is, is David Mitchell, 94. But what he did, as you were talking about, that was the guy who picked off the guard. He picked off, a, I think, the center and the guard. He took two blocks, two offensive linemen out. He won't get any credit for that in the stat sheet, but he's the one that allows a couple other defensive linemen to come free. Coming up at halftime, we're going to talk with Jim Andrioli and Tom Keller, two former Holy Cross greats. They played on those outstanding teams in the 80s and part of the undefeated team in 87. And talk to them and get their thoughts on the state of affairs of Holy Cross football, the program, and where they'd see, like to see the program go in the future. That's coming up at halftime, so stay with us for that. Kind of did a candid interview. You know, TK and I very passionate about this program, and you know, we'd love nothing more to see than the glory days come back here at Fitton Field. And a lot of people are. I mean, we yeah, talked to Kevin Harrington down on the field. It's amazing. Kevin Harrington was a great running back here for Holy Cross, was a roommate of Ronnie Perry Jr.'s. You know, he's a guy, too, that would love to see this program get back because he's a guy who butted heads with BC every year. You know, I mean, he, he remembers the times when, when the cars were parked on 290. Yep. Here is Brown. Just a, That was a quarterback sweep the whole way. And he got down to about the 12-yard line. But there are a lot of passionate people out there, and certainly anyone I think who's ever played football here at Holy Cross would like to see it successful. Well, there's no doubt there, and this was, well, you mentioned this was a quarterback keeper all the way, and Holy Cross does a pretty good job stringing it out. But you know, one of the things that was really nice when you played here was, you know, you used to call them the old timers. There were a lot of people that lived in and around the Worcester area, you know, they got into their 60s, 70s, some guys into their 80s. They used to follow this program with their heart and soul. And, and you know, and I think it does a lot for the community, not only, you know, the alumni and, and student body. Oh, a throwback. Yep, he's got him. John Frazier, the tight end. Touchdown from Brown. Everyone rolled to the right, and then all of a sudden, Frazier just snuck out to the left side, and he was all alone. Holy Cross used to run that very effectively last year with Hector Cordero Reyes as the tight end and Brian Hall, the quarterback. You know, that's that's a heck of a play to call down by the goal line when you got a uh, defense that's really pursuing and you got an arm by Chris Brown just faking all the way to his right and just launches it to his left. So Schwarzberg is in for the point after. And his kick is up and good. Chris Brown with another touchdown throw. 38 seconds left in the first half. Colgate, 31, Holy Cross, 17. Again, let's watch the throwback. You see Chris Brown, he's just going to fake the inside handoff, and then he's going to roll to his right. He's looking right all the way. Now, right here, he stops, throw it back, and watch how wide open the tight end John Frazier is. Frazier with his fourth touchdown of the season, and it is Colgate in front, 31-17. We're back with the final 38 seconds of the first half right after this. a badge of honor. Give blood to the American Red Cross and learn about the Save a Life Tour at givelife.org. A paradise like this isn't easy to come by, but it does still exist. 
Because the Nature Conservancy works locally with people like you to save precious places around the world forever. I'm Paul Newman. Help the Nature Conservancy save the last great places. Here is Colgate. 17 game winning streak they are riding right now. That is the longest in Division I or Division I AA currently. And they are looking to be the first team to go undefeated in the regular season since 1932 in Colgate history. Well, watch the replay here again, the throwback for Colgate's 30th point. Again, Chris Brown just rolling out on a throwback. They roll everybody to the right, and they slip the tight end at the last minute. The closest defender to Holy Cross was number 18, Darren Davis, but really an uncontested touchdown. See, this, there's the drive. Yeah, this offense, their last two scores, I don't think have totaled five minutes. They, they hit you quick, and they hit you hard. We certainly do. Chris Brown came into the game averaging one touchdown pass a contest, and he has thrown three here today in the first half. Gideon Akandi and Matt Bruckner now back to receive the kick. This one in the direction of Bruckner. Bruckner picks it up at the 10 to the 15, and Bruckner is popped at the 15. He goes down at the 17-yard line. Matt Bruckner has kind of been like the Jim Jensen of this team. He has done a little bit of everything. He's played fullback. He's played quarterback. He's been in there as like a tight end H-back. And the senior playing his final game here at Fitton Field. Well, with only 34 seconds left, I wouldn't be surprised if Holy Cross maybe runs a play. The last thing you want to do here is have a turnover and give Colgate a little time to get it in the end zone. So they'll probably just take a knee and go off into the end zone, I mean, into the uh, locker room, playing a pretty good first half. Yep, that's exactly what they're going to do. See if the officials wait till there's under 25, and they do, to spot the football. So that's what's going to happen. That'll be the final play of the first half. Holy Cross will go into the locker room trailing at 31-17, and... You know, you talk about football as, as a game of momentum, as a game of inches and plays, and Colgate stops a Holy Cross drive with the fumble, and then they go down and score themselves, and it's a big swing points-wise, and it gives the Raiders a 31-17 lead here at the first half of play. We're going to take a short break and be back with all of our halftime activities right after these messages. Again, our score at the half is Colgate 31 and Holy Cross 17. 